starting here. Uh, we'll call this meeting to order. Could we please have roll call? Yes, you may. Council Member Shacker? Here. Council Member Perkins? Here. Council Member Phillips? Here. Council Member McCafferty? Here. Council Member Armstrong? Here. Vice Mayor Granillo? Here. Mayor Miller? Here. And our town attorney is present remotely. All right. Public hearing consideration and possible action on resolution number 2023 1231 regarding adopting the Make It Chino 2040 general plan as a general plan for the Chino Valley, the town of Chino Valley, excuse me, and directing that it be placed on the ballot at special election to be held November 7th, 2023 for ratification by the voters. Hi. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Lori Lineberry, your deputy. Department of Development Services Director. Um, tonight, we are here finally after almost a year's worth of work to present to you the general plan being proposed to replace the existing general plan. The matrix team has worked very closely with us and with the steering committee that the council appointed. And we've spent a lot of time and a lot of effort doing a lot of outreach, hoping that we can get as much comment in so that we can form the plan the way the community would like to see the plan formed. We think it does a pretty darn good job. Um, not everybody got everything that they wanted, but in the planning world, that means it's a good plan. So I'm going to hand this over to Celeste from the Matrix Group so she can start the presentation. Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. It is truly an honor to stand up this evening and present the final plan for your review and adoption or approval, I should say. And I just want to say thank you to all of you and thank you to the public as well as your staff. Lori and Will, we wouldn't be able to do it without them. Literally, we were talking day in and day out, especially near these last couple um, months. And then um, your ambassadors, the, the steering committee, um, who did a major heavy lift as well. So uh, on behalf of Matrix, I, I do want to say thank you very, very, very much. And it is truly a pleasure, like I said. And I may be the person on behalf of Matrix presenting this evening, but I too have an amazing um, team. And they did a good heavy lift as well. And that is Brent Cox, who was the project manager. Um, Mr. Ed Boyk, who is the deputy project manager, who's here. Both of them are here this evening. And Heather um, Garbarino, our lead planner. Unfortunately, she is on vacation, but she is joining virtually. Um, she is as excited, hopefully, as all of, of, as all of you. So on that note, I'd like to go forward and present the Make It Chino 2040 general plan. As you all well know, we're here today because you all identified that there is a state mandate to update your general plan every 10 years. And your 2014 plan is nine years old and it will be expiring next year. So you're right in line and you're right in, uh, on time and on schedule. Um, so in addition to the mandate, it is a great opportunity to update the general plan for a couple of reasons, and you'll see a few of them here. But the key point of it is, is your general plan will be able, this general plan will be able to present the growth that's happened since um, within the last 10 years, but it also reflects the new vision, the new vision of your town and what we heard from all of you and in, in, in the people. Um, the 2040 general plan is closer to a rewrite than an update in order to meet that town's new vision. As you know, the vision is really to focus in on preserving and um, pr protecting the rural character of the town to make sure that you preserve recreational opportunities, those beautiful dark skies, the expansive view sheds, and um, the ever-ending grasslands that you all have within your backyard. So the general plan, as you know, is very interesting. It took uh, almost a year, uh, 11 months for us to come forward to present um, the general plan that the steering committee has brought forward for your review and approval. It's long-term, it's comprehensive and it's general. And that means that it really covers a multiple number of topics, as you well know, the different elements, but it doesn't go deep. 
in each one of those areas, but they're all interconnected and they're all related. And that's what the general plan does. It brings all of those together and they take into consideration um, each other as you're moving forward with looking at your future circulation plan, your future facilities plan and such. What we definitely wanna make sure is the general plan is not, it's not zoning, it's not your unified um, development ordinance. It truly is a policy document. It's, reg it's not regulatory in nature, thus it's not law, and it does not modify any existing uses. And that's really important for your constituents, your citizens to, to understand we are not changing their existing land uses. And we're not changing the existing, the, your zoning ordinance that you have today. But what it does, um, what this is, this foundation that you have in front of you is the 2040 general plan. It will help all of you as elected officials to make decisions in the future as new proposed developments or rezonings come forward. And I'll go into that in, in a bit. There are three components that make up a general plan or make up your general plan, I should say, for the town. There's two that are by law, required by law. Um, the first one is the future land use map, which is the component that the majority of the people always go to first. Why? Because it's visual in nature, it's easy, and it illustrates by use what is projected or what is um, the goal for future land use within your town to meet that vision. And then the second legal component is goals and policies of each one of the different elements that really comprise the overall um, plan structure or organization. Those goals and policies, although many people don't go to those goals and policies, are as important as that future land use map because they're going to help you and guide you in making those decisions on all of the different types of developments that come forward. Um, on your future development or your agendas as you as soon as the, the project is or the plan is ratified in November, hopefully. Um, and then third component is the implementation plan. That is not required by law, but it is one of the most important components because that is your playbook, step-by-step -step actions of what the town needs to move forward with in order to make the vision and these goals and policies in the future land use map a reality in the future. Um, so that also provides the time frame on what, when those actions need to happen, um, who, who is the responsible party, and also what, what its steps or prioritization. I talked about the time frame. So this plan, as you well know, is truly, was truly, and I, I stand here and confident that we did our very, very best, and I should say we is encompassing of everybody, that this is truly a community-led plan. And we heard their voices, and you'll see throughout the, the general plan that I'm presenting to you today for your um, review and approval, uh, it does address the majority of those. So the overall community outreach or engagement was um, components or methods was made up of a multitude of different um, uh, methods, I should say, as I, I talked about. We had, of course, the public open houses. We had a number of work sessions with all of you and the commission, Planning and Zoning Commission. We had focus group interviews with the different industries like the businesses, the historic um, uh, component, the real estate component. So we did our best to make sure that we captured all of the different uh, sectors in um, groups within your community. And of course, we had the website that was available and a number of online opportunities for everybody to provide um, input. In fact, as we go forward, you'll see here by this um, slide, there, there were two major public open houses. Um, they were well uh, attended. There were the three work sessions that I talked about. There were six different steering committees, truly a, a dedicated team that are gonna be your ambassadors to move forward between hopefully an approval this evening and to the date of the vote um, for ratification to talk about what is um, the benefits of this plan, why it's so valuable to all of you and to each one of the citizens. But if you look at the numbers, it also supports 
that this was a community um, led plan. You'll see here that the town took a, a vested interest in making sure the citizens were well aware that there were two public open houses, close to um, 5,500 postcards were mailed out to the different or to your citizens, informing them that there was a public um, meeting, that they had the opportunity to come and provide input. At that meeting, over 200, at those two meetings, over 250 people attended and provided input at numerous different types of exercises that were tailored to your community, as well as um, other in input that was uh, the questionnaire, the ID app that provided the opportunity to geographically show us where there were issues, as well as um, comments that we received through the website. We had over 1,600 people view the project website. That is a great number. So what did we hear um, from the community? Um, so what I'm going to do in the next uh, few minutes here, I'm going to go by topic or basically by element and summarize at a high level what we heard from the public. And when I say public, that is inclusive of everyone, elected appointed officials and the steering committee and town staff. Um, for land use, we heard that the rural character, preserve that rural character, that is one of the most important components to, to um, all of the citizens here. And while we're preserving that um, rural character, we have to make sure yep, that we have attainable housing, housing for all different demographics, um, from young families to the elderly to single um, uh, people. And this provides the opportunity uh, for the different income levels as well. And the what we heard was, again, in order to preserve that rural character, that they didn't really want any more than eight dwelling units per acre. And that's the average um, comments that we received throughout. There were some that said, of course, they wanted a little bit more, but overall, it was no more than eight dwelling units per, per acre. And uh, of course, commercial, the higher density uses located on State Route 89. And one of the other important components was buffering to make sure the goals and policies within this general plan that they provide buffers through landscaping, um, screening of any sort, fencing, and or by different transitional uses that are compatible to each other to make sure there's not incompatible uses um, abutting each other. That was a, that was a big um, voice that we heard from the community. As far as circulation is concerned, nothing that you haven't heard already. One of the biggest um, comments we received is please, please prioritize road maintenance and to make sure that in this general plan, there's a, either goals and policies that address that. And with that, of course, we would love to have, um, we heard they would love to have a transportation plan and that um, walkability, not necessarily throughout the entire town, but to make sure that in activity areas, recreational areas, and where it made sense that sidewalks and connectivity existed to support safety. You heard that your, I stated that in your vision, recreation was really important and um, agritourism and recreational tourism. And thus um, for parks, recreation and natural resources topic, we heard that open space was critical to preserve the natural um, resources and amenities that we currently have and to support additional ones. And you'll see in the plan that there are plan, uh, goals and policies for that. And that um, the overall interconnectivity is really important for trails, for that open space throughout. And you'll see how we weave that into the plan as well. So we heard from the community on community, um, the different um, community facilities and the different community services. We heard that there's a need for a town center that's much larger than just what um, we have here today. Um, as your community grows and to adapt, or adapt and provide um, the space for the growth that's coming in the future. And we also heard that water is critical and that as you look forward to approving developments is to make sure that there's enough water, not only for the citizens today, but for your future citizens in the future. And then finally, economic development. You must have heard us many, many times talk about 
You can have a great community that's very rural, but a town needs to have revenue in order to provide those community services that are going to address those road maintenance issues to address the growth of um, interconnectivity for your recreational trails to provide for other services that you currently provide for today. And so uh, li live work opportunities, really supporting the mom and pop type of, of um, businesses and to look at incentives for uh, all the different um, small businesses. Look for, make sure we're keeping those tax dollars in Chino Valley with your citizens, but also um, generating, attracting others from uh, other communities that are your adjacent neighbors and partners, as well as from Phoenix, Flagstaff, and other communities um, also. Of course, we heard Old Home Manor was a great opportunity, not only for recreation, but also for commercial tourism and economic development. So how is the general plan organized? There are eight different chapters within the general plan. The majority of the chapters are there are five key chapters that are focused on the different elements. And then of course you have your introduction, your community engagement summary of how the, it was a community led plan. And then the last one is your implementation and administration of the plan. So key by law, there are certain requirements for major and minor amendments that we needed to define for all of you um, as you administer the general plan. So that is in chapter eight. So what I'm gonna be doing from um, this, um, uh, this slide forward is going element by element and talking about what are the key goals and policies that we captured in each one of those um, elements. But before I do that, I wanna highlight one thing that I think is really important. When a community goes forward and they update their general plan, there is no way that any community or any elected and appointed official can provide and meet 100% of what everybody is asking for. But what you can do, what we all believe this general plan does, it, it meets a very, very high percentage of what we heard. And you, um, we summarized what we heard. And as I go through and highlight some of those key goals and policies, you'll see how we made sure and everyone who was part of the development of the plan um, addressed those voices. And we believe that it does truly capture um, the majority of what you hear, or what we heard, I should say. So the general plan, I stated you have five different elements, but really, if you step back, there are 14 different ele elements or topic areas that you asked us to incorporate into the general plan. So what we did is there's seven that are required by state law. You'll see them there in the metal column, land use, circulation, you know, cost of development. But you all decided that, and you were listening to the public and your citizens prior to the development of the update and identified topics that were really important to add as elective elements or topics for the general plan. Housing, recreation, conservation, wildlife and habitat, community services, community facilities, and economic development. So we did incorporate all of those topic areas along with what is, what is required by state law, and we bundled them in the appropriate topic element that you'll see in the first, the left column there that says plan elements. So what I'm gonna be doing here is I'm gonna talk about the future land use map first, the illustrative component, and then I'll go into each one of the elements. So the future land use map you'll see here has nine different land use categories. And if you step back and you look at the map, if you kind of cut it in three different areas, right? If you look at everything east of Granite Creek, the area between Granite Creek and State Route 89, and then the area west of State Route 89. So the big picture is we heard rural character. Three different land use um, categories are recommended for your future land use map. We have ranch agricultural, 
that supports one dwelling unit per four plus acres. So it could be five acres, 20 acres, 100 acres. Um, that's the light green. And you'll see on the map that everything east of Granite Creek is ranch agricultural, very, 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 very low density, very rural in nature, um, and really focusing in on your heritage, the agricultural component. The next um, land use category is rural residential, which is one dwelling unit per acre. Does it mean that they have to put one dwelling unit per acre? No. They may have a five acres, they may have four acres, and they may just decide to put one dwelling unit per acre. But that's a very rural residential um, land use category as well. And the majority you'll see of the rural residential land use is located west of State Route 89. The third residential category is neighborhood residential, which is one to four dwelling units per acre. And that neighborhood residential, the majority of um, neighborhood residential is within that center part where we call it a moderate mix of, of um, residential, which has some rural residential, has some ranch agricultural residential, and it has that mix of neighborhood residential. The purple are some really important um, areas within your future land use map. We heard from all of you that there, there's opportunities for mixed use, economic development, but we want to be very methodical on where we want to guide that type of development. So there are six different centers, basically activity type of centers, but they're centers that are proposed that are in purple. Those purple centers um, focus on the land use horizontal mixed use. So that could be commercial, it could be office, it could be um, any multifamily or single family of dwelling units up to eight dwelling units per acre. It does not permit light industrial or heavy industrial. So more of your regional commercial is what we would recommend for those centers. Um, and if you look, there's uh, four different centers along State Route 89. We have the North Gateway Center at the very top at five north, road five north. We have the Uptown Center at two, road two north. We have the Historic Center that's located at Center Street. And then your Southgate Center, which is located south of um, four, road four south. The other two centers, Old Home Manor Center, that speaks for itself. And then the Pea Vine Center, which is off of Old Home Manor Road. And so that focuses more on uh, office, employment, and really uh, pulling from the light industrial that is adjacent to it. Open space. So open space you'll see is in the darker green. So they follow your different creeks. We have Sullivan Lake, that is open space. Um, we have the 980 acres dedicated um, for hopefully a state park that is um, designated as open space. So you'll see that open space is integral to the entire community. And we'll talk about how we're recommending to connect to the interconnectivity of the, the open space in the um, parks and recreation and natural resource element. So the other two um, areas is commercial and then industrial. There's commercial, there's neighborhood commercial, and then there's regional commercial. Neighborhood commercial is more that what does a neighborhood need? Dry cleaners, grocery stores, um, barber shops, and such. And then the regional commercial is the opportunity where you're going to be attracting people from outside of Geno as well as providing services to your community here within Geno Valley. And they're specifically located only along State Route 89 and in areas that, does, that really do not support strip commercial. I'll talk about that in a second. Light Industrial is located um, both at the southern part of, the, of your community in your town, and then at uh, the northern part off of State Route 89, just south of Road 5 North. Very light industrial. In fact, um, and I'll talk about uses later of each one of these, but, um, and then the heavy industrial, you notice there's only 
two major areas. They're really there to support your mining and aggregate type of uses. And they're located not next to neighborhood or neighborhoods or even rural residential um, uh, communities, but along with the Granite Creek. So overall, you have almost 40,000 acres of land within your town that is within your future land use map. And what we did is we estimated the number of developable units that would be at build out if everybody built on their property um, focused on the uses that are within the future land use map. And how we did that is we took the total acres and we took out 20%. That 20% is dedicated to the acreage that is required to put in roads, to put in infrastructure. So we took all of that, that land out. And then, so that left us about 80% of developable land. In most communities, they never build out at max density of each one of those land use or residential categories. So what we did is we took um, the 75% of what that dense, or the instead of 100%, 75% of max density. So you'll see in the main, the larger table there, that it comes to 18,000 dwelling units about. And per your zoning ordinance today, if everybody built out what they currently have entitled or zoned in your unified development ordinance, it would generate 23,732 dwelling units. So I would say this, this general plan and this future land use map truly does support the vision of a rural community. We also um, added a table to the right here. It's a comparison of the number of acres by the major land use categories, um, the town compared to national average of communities of your size. And you'll see that you're very close in, in almost every single one of them. You're almost 6% higher in open space, which supports recreation and other amenities, outdoor amenities. You're about 5% less in the commercial area. You're about 3% less in the industrial area, but very, very, very close. So goals and policies, the other very important component that a lot of people forget about. So land use um, key goals and policies. I'm not gonna go through every single one of these, but you'll see that we have a policy on buffering and making sure that your land uses are compatible with each other. We have a policy that states discourage strip commercial along State Route 89. And how do you do that? You do that with that horizontal mixed use and focusing the denser type of uses within those purple center, those purple areas, which are your different centers, those di um, four different centers along State Route 89. And to um, and what does that do? It supports agricultural and equestrian uses outside of the corridor, outside of 89 corridor. So, and the other item that I wanna um, highlight is those, those centers um, have a mix of uses that are permitted and to really help all of you, the elected and appointed officials uh, make decisions in the future, we are recommending in the policies and in implementation plan that you go forward and then develop this area plan that is more detailed to that specific center that identifies um, by parcel what those uses should be so they you're not doing it um, piecemeal as a developer or a private partner comes up within the purple areas and also incorporate design guidelines because each one of those, um, each one of those centers really support a different character. You're gonna have a different character in old home manor center than you are in the historic center, than you are in your gateway centers, just as an example. So that has the, that gives you those design guidelines, give you the opportunity to maintain the branding of the town, but to also have a character within each one of those. Um, you'll see another one, we, ha we have a policy in there that states um, storage units or outdoor storage areas are only permitted in light industrial uses. So that's gonna take those storage 
and outdoor uses in their category they should be in, light industrial, and outside of the gateway in the main um, road in your community, State Route 89. There is one recommendation that we have uh, to change the plan that you have in front of you. Um, and we, we were looking at this and in, in talking with the town staff. We thought it would be best to do a rewording of one of the policies to make it more clear. And that policy is policy LU 8.4. And it reads, and it's up here on the slide, if the 980 acres are not designated as a state park per state legislation, then the future land use map for the 980 acres will revert to the alternate future land use that's illustrated in figure 3-2, which is to your right here. And so those that 980 acres is bounded by that purple, um, big bold purple um, uh, line. And you'll see that we have Sullivan Lake to the top there, dedicated in the, if it doesn't go to a, a dedicated um, state park, that the future land use map would say it's that that area will be open space of parks. And then you'll see that there's a mix of um, ranch and agricultural to neighborhood residential, a little bit of commercial and uh, open space within the, the majority of the other acreage within this area. So the future circulation plan, as you'll see to your right here, identifies the north and south and east-west um, connectivity for your uh, vehicular, as well as potentially some um, pedestrian and, and uh, multi-purpose trails, which we'll talk about in a, in a second here. So we have policies that support this circulation plan, stating that you should move forward to develop a transportation master plan. And we also have a policy that is in there in short term or time frame for implementation to prioritize road maintenance and to develop a road maintenance program. And a program that we have this much money dedicated each year for maintenance of roads and to make sure there's a cycle that keeps the, uh, the life of the roads maintained throughout, um, throughout the maintenance program. The parks, recreation, and natural resources policies and goals, you'll see here, we have the future parks and recreation plan. Um, you'll see the proposed state park to the north. You'll see your two major creeks as open space as well. You'll see your existing um, pea vine trail there. But what is being proposed is the dash line. And there's a Granite Creek um, trail, multi-purpose trail that you'll see that runs along Granite Creek and then runs along Road 4 North. So it um, integrates the recreational uses at Old Home Manor Center. And then it will run up and continue Peavine Trail to connect up to the state park. We also have, you notice that there's not additional neighborhood parks within your community. That would be an additional uh, community service that you would have to maintain. But we do have in a, a policy in there that if there are um, any subdivisions of 50, dw 50 dwelling units or more, that that developer is re required to provide parks for that specific subdivision, but also those parks have to be open to the public and they have to be um, available to the rest of your, your citizens as well. And where possible, have connectivity um, to the major open space trails that you see here. And we have policies that, re uh, that encourage and reinforce expanding the youth and teen recreational programs and amenities, both not only outdoor, but also indoor. You'll see the future community facilities plan to your right here. Um, it identifies not only the existing facilities that you currently have, but some of the proposed facilities as well. Um, just like a proposed or uh, to develop a transportation master plan, there is a goal in there that states develop a facilities master plan to address all the future population growth and development um, that you will have in the future here in Chino Valley. Um, with that, we are recommending also, and we believe it's underway or will be underway soon, is a water, sewer, and stormwater master plan. 
which is very, very important. Drainage is critical as you have more development, drainage and um, the development and drainage changes. And so existing uses can be impacted from new, new development. So how are you gonna pay for all of these services uh, and facilities? There are so many grants out there that you could pursue as a town. So we would highly recommend, and there's a policy stating to make sure that that is a priority. And so many communities don't realize the, the value that a grant writer has for a town or even just outsourcing for specific grants. And then finally is the economic development goals and policies. And those goals and policies you'll see there really reinforces what I've already talked about. The center with mixed uses in old home manor um, area, uh, making sure you focus um, the attraction of different types of businesses from retail to tourism um, and making sure they're complementary to your community, the lifestyle that you wanna maintain and that meets the vision that is um, identified within your general plan. And the last bullet there is the most important bullet. We heard from you right from the beginning that you want to make sure that this general plan reinforces the importance of making sure your town is fiscally and financially um, st stable. And so there is policies in there that support that as well. And with that, that's the end of our um, presentation and we'll open it back over to you, Mary. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there any questions on? Oh, how about over here? All right. Is that all we're doing in this meeting? Was that? We need to hold a public hearing on this one. You need to hold a public hearing? Yes, please. Okay. So I'm going to open up a public hearing. Thank you. Is there anybody that would like to make a comment? I did have one speaker comment card from Rachel for now. <laughs> Only one. Well, there she is. I guess that means I have to say it all. Um, Rachel Ferno. <laughs> Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, Council Members. Um, I come before you tonight as a member of the public, um, but also as a member that was on the steering committee and um, the recently elected chairperson for the ambassador group that will be um, responsible for conveying the positive messages that come along with this plan to the public over the next several months. So I thought it would be important for me to come before you this evening and just um, kind of highlight my time on the steering committee and what I observed. First and foremost, I think it's important to note that out of the 13 members on that committee, there was only two of us that attended 100% of the meetings, myself and Larry Aldrich, who is in the audience tonight. Um, the other members, there was seven people who participated 50% of the time or more, four people who participated under 35%. And there was actually one of your suggestions that attended not a single meeting. So going forward, um, I would really love to see more consideration in the people we appoint to these things and for them to understand that the commitment that it is. Um, it really came down to between five and eight people who worked on this plan from the community. And I just don't think that was a fair representation at all. So some of the things that I am very proud of, however, was those, those members who did attend, we worked really well together. We didn't always agree, but we were able to come to good compromises on what we felt was a good direction for our community to grow in over the next essentially 10 years before a rewrite comes up again. Um, a couple of the classifications of land use that I was most proud of was definitely the rural residential. Um, that's going to account for over 10,000 of our acres. So over a quarter of our acres in the community are going to be preserved under rural agriculture or rural residential. Um, then the neighborhood residential one to four acres, um, we are at like 20, just under 2,700 acres that will allow for that. Um, but it's important to note that a lot of that is already designated for entitlements that are sitting at 0.16 zoning. So um, now if those people come back to do anything different, have to go through the planning process, we will actually be reducing their density. So I think that's a really positive step we took. Uh, the HMU, um, I think this is probably the most controversial area. That's that purple area. And um, 
I think it's important for us to be sending a message to the public that even though it's 3,100 acres, only 25% of that will be allowed to be residential development, which equates to about 775 acres. Um, other than that, I'm really happy with a lot of the policies and goals that we put forward specifically for our trails and recreation, economic development, buffering, housing attainability. Um, so I'm definitely open down the road to be a facilitator to the public and make all the suggestions on why this plan is so much better than what we have. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Was it, that's the only one that I had submitted. Was there anybody else that wanted to talk that didn't put in a card? All right, we're going to close the public hearing. And now are we going to adjourn? We're going to need a vote on this um, to approve with the amendment policy LU 8-4. Or I shouldn't say approve. We need a motion, a second, and a vote on this item with an amendment, please. Okay. Did you guys get that? May I make a statement before we go to vote? Uh -huh. May I make a statement before we go of to vote? Okay. I just want to say thank you, Matrix, the steering committee, everybody involved. Um, I think, um, Celeste, what you said, the I'm like 85%, like this is good. So that's a good thing. So I appreciate all you guys did. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else want to say anything? I agree. I mean, Matrix, Lori, Will, all the, all the staff. Steering committee, you guys did a good job. Okay. Now, can we have a motion to approve this with the amendment? If that's the motion that council would like, yes. <laughs> and then on the screen, um, we have a resolution. So we'll need to, whatever the motion is, include that resolution number. And to accept resolution. Okay, I'd like to make a motion we approve resolution, resolution number 2023-1231 regarding adopting the Make It Chino 2040 general plan as the general plan for the town of Chino Valley and directing that it be placed on the ballot at the special election to be held on November 7th 2023 for ratification by the voters including the in amendment including the amendment policy lu8-4 lu8-4 policy lu8-4 okay a motion made is there a second i'll second motion made and seconded all in favor say aye aye, aye. All right. any opposed motion carries i did now I did we can adjourn well. And you don't need to make a motion. I'm just going to declare us adjourned. Thank you. All right, we're going to call the media order. Would you please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Can we please have a roll call? Of course. Council Member Shacker? Here. Councilmember Perkins? Here. Councilmember Phillips? Here. Councilmember McCafferty? Here. Councilmember Armstrong? Here. Vice Mayor Grenell? Here. Mayor Miller? Here. And our town attorney is present remotely. All right. Introductions, presentations, approximations. 
Presentation of Certificate of Appreciation to Members of the General Plan Steering Committee. This item has been moved to the July 11th, 2023 regular meeting. Call to the public. Call to the public is an opportunity for the public to address the council on any issue within the jurisdiction of the council that is not on the agenda. Public comment is at the discretion of the council and not required by law. Individuals are limited to speak for three minutes. Yielding of time will not be permitted. The total time for call to the public may be up to 30 minutes per meeting. Council action taken as a result of public comment will be limited to directing staff to study the matter, scheduling the matter for further consideration and decision at a later date, or responding to criticism. Disrespectful behavior will not be tolerated. This includes loud outbursts, profanity, and disruptive discussions among our audience. I did not have any cards submitted, Mayor. Okay, no one wants to speak. All right, moving on. A uh, status report by mayor and council regarding current events. I do not have anything other than we are not having fireworks on the 4th of July. Our fireworks will be on the territorial weekend, which is Labor Day weekend. Anybody over here? Go. Amy. Um, I do. Hi, everyone. Um, just a reminder, uh, Friday is the 10th anniversary of the Yarnell Hill fire where we lost the Grand Amount Interagency Hotshot 19. Um, there is a ceremony, the 10th anniversary commemoration ceremony is this Friday at three o'clock on Goodwin Street at the courthouse. Um, if anybody would like to attend, please do. Just want to read a quick, quick snippet um, from the Grand Amount Inter Interagency Hotshot Crew Learning and Tribute Center. The loss of our 19 hotshots on June 30th, 2013 made a profound impact on the hearts and souls throughout our local communities, the state of Arizona, the United States, and other nations. This event is now part of local history, and it is our duty and honor to preserve the legacy of the 19 to illustrate the heartfelt kindness and generosity which poured out locally and globally to recognize the unique character and work of the firefighters worldwide and to educate so this may never happen again. I yield. Bob, did you have anything? No, I didn't. Eric? No. No, no, no. Oh, Tom. Excellent job by the police department at the Olson's uh, event where they showed off the Sirius, took the show by an in hand. The rest of them just kind of stood there and watched him, but it was funny to watch. <laughs> Mrs. Town Manager? Thank you, Mayor Council. Just a couple of things. I am so pleased to announce that we received our certi certificate of occupancy for our police department building Yay! today. So over the next few weeks, um, our police chief and his team will be putting together a plan to get everything moved over to the building, but it's super exciting. Um, you did mention July 4th, so I want to remind everyone that town offices will be closed for Independence Day next Tuesday, but our pool and aquatic center will be open. And as an alternative to the celebration of our country's birthday for our citizens, the town will be hosting an All-American Bash on Saturday, July 8th. It's going to be held from 5 to 8. It's in Memory Park. Uh, it's celebrating our country with a hometown feel. There's going to be contest games, music, food. So come out, it should be really a great time for all. And last, although uh, Maggie had to leave, she had uh, some family in town. I wanted to recognize her. She was recently elected to the board for the Arizona Association of Economic Development. Not only does this speak to Maggie's leadership and respect in the economic development community, both in our region, but throughout the state and gives our town a major presence on the key statewide organization. So congratulations to Maggie. Thank you, Mayor. All right, consent agenda. Is there anyone would wish to remove an item from the agenda? Consent agenda. I would like to move item 5E. E is in Edward? Yes, sir. Okay. Anything else? Not me. No. Thank you. I make a mo motion we approve consent agenda A, B, C, D, and F. Second. Motion made and seconded. All in favor? Okay. okay. Any opposed? Okay. Uh, consent, agenda, uh, consent agenda item E. 
Consideration of possible action to award a one-year contract to Titan Landscaping for landscape maintenance services along State Route 89 in the amount of $100,128. Bob. I was just wondering if the, uh, with the town's equipment and employees, if we can't do that within the town. Uh, thank you, Mayor, uh, Council Members, Council Member Shacker. Uh, we have been doing half of this for the past several years. Uh, we've been contracting out uh, the south half of town, basically around Olson's South, where the newer section of highway is. Um, it's an extreme amount of time and effort uh, to do that and takes away from the other jobs the street crews can be doing. Uh, so we think it's a better use of time for a landscape firm to, to contract this out. Uh, and, and yes, we, we could do it, but it, again, it would take a hundred thousand dollars worth of work away from the other streets in the town as well. So it's a trying to fit the resources where we see fit best fits the, the operating system. So, uh, get the contractor in there a few days a month, they can hit it with, with a lot more men and equipment and get it done and knock it out while we're out on the other roads besides the highway. So it's a few days a month. So it's like $8,000 for two days because they only do it 12 times a year. Well, we've got a scope of services in the contract that they're required to do. So it's weed spraying, weed maintenance, trash pickup. Um, I've got a couple slides that I prepared just in case. Uh, so it's it's removing trash and debris that they need to do before they do any mowing. I think that's been a comment from the public before. They would like the trash removed before it's mowed. Um, mowing the grass, weed prevention and removal, and, and also cleaning of the sidewalks. When you get all the cinders on the sidewalks in the wintertime and everything, it's that sort of cleaning as well. The areas are generally... Everything behind the curb is what the state makes us do, um, but that also includes behind the curb inside the medians. So it's inside the medians as well. Um, it doesn't include actually replacing the concrete of the sidewalks if that needs replacing. That It's just the landscape maintenance, not the actual repair of the concrete. And everything inside the curb and the travel lanes is ADOT's responsibility. Okay. So... We can't do it cheaper. Possibly cheaper, but again, we would need yeah. to hire additional staff and we don't want to do that. resources okay. to to accomplish that as well uh, to be able to provide the services. Uh, this is this qualifies for her fund, so it'd be the same pot of money if we hired someone or brought in the contractors. Okay, so it'd be roughly equivalent by the time you add labor equipment materials and then benefits for for employees right i'm satisfied okay sir anything else on that a motion please I make a motion we approve consent agenda e second, second. motion made and seconded all in favor aye. Aye. aye any opposed motion carries action items <clears throat> consideration possible action to approve a professional service agreement with Civil Tech Engineering Incorporated. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, pleasure to be here before you this evening. While my presentation is loading, thank you very much. Um, the item before me this evening is regarding the Integrated Water Master Planning and the Capital Improvement Planning. I did want to review some activities. There's a lot of history with this activity. So in March of 2019, uh, the Water and Utility Subcommittee had several discussions and meetings to discuss integrated water master planning and what that entailed. And in March, we had a council retreat um, regarding an old home manor um, integrated water master plan discussed as a first step towards overall townwide master planning and capital improvement planning. So that's what we had started with um, looking at old home manor in February of 2020, council approved the integrated water master plan and the capital improvement plan for all of Old Home Manor. And then in April of uh, 2021, Civil Tech completed the Old Home Manor um, integrated water master plan and capital improvement plan. 
And then we moved on and budgeted um, additional funds moving forward with a townwide uh, proposal for integrated water master planning and capital improvement planning. So in January of 2023, the town released a solicitation for the comprehensive townwide IWMP and CIP. And in May um, in 2023, we had interviews and final selection of which uh, civil tech engineering was selected as the most qualified candidate. And in June of 2023, we developed a final scope fee and schedule for the comprehensive uh, planning for both uh, IWMP and CIP. And then of course, today I am here before you to discuss. Uh, the proposed phase one work is gonna look at five major aspects. Um, the integrated water master plan consists of four master plans, but it will also look at townwide growth projections. And that will look at what that will take from a water demand townwide, both existing existing development and future proposed development. And then the four water, uh, the four master plans, which is water resources master plan, the uh, water master plan, which is a water system, the wastewater or sewer, sewer master plan, and then the reclaim uh, water master plan. The proposed uh, phase two work is basically looking at what our current infrastructure is. We have water systems, wastewater systems, and reclaim water systems, and some appurtenances with those and water production. So making sure that any planning will incorporate what we currently have into this future uh, potential build out of, of the town's infrastructure and utilities. And then phase three work is a five-year capital improvement plan. And that will look at uh, determine the capital improvements needed. These be infrastructure improvements over a five-year period, looking at what is prioritized from year one to year five. It will also include a, a year five to 10 uh, proposal at forecasting what may be needed from year five through 10 and then looking at developing those cost estimates and then determine improvements needed on the existing system as well. The importance of this master plan <clears throat> is um, we have to first develop, and this is kind of the normal progression that all cities and towns, utility providers, water and sewer go through as this four part process. First step is integrated water master planning. This looks at what your needs are and assessing all your needs. Next phase is your capital improvement plan, which looks at developing that five-year plan, what's needed and when. And then you develop the integrated or the infrastructure improvement plan. This is really your funding assessment. This is done sometimes in-house or through consulting. But this is actually when you start looking at the development of your impact fees, your hookup fees, et cetera. And then lastly, which we're in the process of looking at right now is your rate study, looking at the adjustments of both rates and fees. Other important items that we'll determine from this, we're gonna determine the build out water demands for the town um, for the first time. This is the first time we're doing a, a town-wide integrated water master plan, but we will learn how much water resources we will need at build out of the community. We'll also look at the water resource availability and the timing for future water importation and, and mitigation associated infrastructure needed to import water. We will develop a complete water sewer and reclaim water system map throughout the entire town, both again, existing development and future development. We'll also look at a five-year capital improvement plan with the priorities and needs again. And then we'll also have a five to 10 year forecast of what we could plan in the future and potentially start saving for to ensure that we can financially meet those obligations. This plan is the most important plan. It's a living plan. It is a very expensive plan, but once it's accomplished, future plans are just updates to this plan. There'll be fractions of the cost as we update, just based on what's needed to be updated, whether it's some a water adjustments, sewer adjustments, et cetera. But this is the big step forward. And again, this is the first time the town is actually doing this work. Any industrial, commercial, or residential landowners that desire utilities will have to utilize this plan to know what kind of water system, sizing, the alignments, and those kind of uh, requirements. So we'll have plans to actually hand those types of land developments. There are some project administration deliverables. We will have council presentation and work sessions with this effort. It is very big. We will provide workshops with appropriate town staff and officials. We'll prepare a standalone executive summary of the entire master plan, such as we did for Old Home Manor. It's a very small brochure, but it'll have all the big components in that executive summary. Then we'll be delivering the integrated water master plan and the delivery of the five-year capital improvement plan and the five to 10-year projection plan. And the main thing too, is we'll have the hydraulic models delivered for the water system, the sewer system and the reclaim system. These are what we hand off to the engineers of future developers and land uh, developments in the future. Proposed budget is for civil tech engineering at $498,994. 
I know it's the busy slide at the schedule on the very top there you'll see the start and finish. We propose to start this just after the 1st of July and finish it around July 1st of 2024. That's our proposed schedule. You can see the breakouts here. We will involve the Water Utility Subcommittee and Council as appropriate and of course town staff. So the staff proposal, we recommend approval of the Comprehensive Integrated Water Master Plan and Capital Improvement Plan contract with Civil Tech Engineering in the amount of $498,994 for fiscal year 23-24. That concludes my presentation, and I'd be happy to address any questions you may have. I think I did under six minutes. <laughs> I, think I did. It. I think I did. It, <laughs> it was you, fourteen you slides. Told me you were going to cut my pay if I did. It's so 14. I did. <laughs> fourteen. Fourteen slides. Thirteen. I don't know. You didn't count the. You didn't count the. The end, one, the end one's pleasurable though. Look at it's, it's, it's still there. there. Comments. It's still a slide. <laughs> Bob, you got anything done? I'm um, actually good. Okay. Amy. <laughs> I'm I'm happy we're doing this. Very good. Yeah. How about over here? Nope. Is this one of the master plans that we had to do for the general plan? Hey, one down, 14 to go. Thank you. <laughs> Water is always first out of the gate. So congratulations. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. I make a motion to approve the professional service agreement with Civil Tech Engineering. Inc. to develop an integrated water master plan and a five-year capital improvement plan for $498,994. I'll second. Motion made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item B, public hearing regarding resolution 2023-1225 relating to the town's final budget for fiscal year 2023-24 and the proposed expenditure limitations for the same year in the amount of Forty-five million one hundred fifty dollars and five one hundred fifty thousand five hundred dollars. Sorry, it's a lot of numbers. It's a lot of numbers, Mister Mayor. And um, better not be. <laughs> being a public hearing, I have just a brief uh, a brief overview for the, our public. I know Council is very familiar with it. We've been through this several times <laughs> so far. Um, we started, well, staff started back in January and uh, February, March got really into the, the whole budget process. It takes about six months to get all the way through. And of course, um, the first time you guys saw it was in May uh, 17th of 23. And we've been taking all these steps from adopting the tentative budget. We've got everything published and we're ready to go. So this is like the next, the final step to complete the budget for next fiscal year. Um, this year's budget is slightly less than last year's. It's going to be $45,150,500. We did, I want to go over a few slides on some of the really neat things or the, some of the good things that we're going to be able to accomplish or start working on with this year's budget. One of the major things that I think is uh, really important is we're going to make some real good progress on paying down our PSPRS liability. We paid 400000 out of contingencies, money we had budgeted but hadn't spent this fiscal year already. We're going to pay another million dollars on basically on July 2nd. And then if we don't spend our contingencies next year, which we haven't in prior years, we we'll, should be able to pay down another 400000 So this time next year, we should owe about 600000 five to 600000 left. So it'll be at that point that town can just budget to pay it off. On it. So that's a great thing and a great accomplishment for the town. We are adding some additional staffs, so about 10 positions. I won't go through all of them, but one of them is, is three new police officers and, and some other police aid, custodian, a fleet mechanic, et cetera. So we're going from 114 to 124 and a half employees. The half employee, he's a short person. <laughs> <laughs> but a lot of these positions have been needed for quite a long time. So, um, we're doing some really good projects. The, P the P Vine Trail connection, that's actually doing the fencing to connect to the Prescott P Vine Trail. Um, you'll be seeing that coming to you pretty quick here. Uh, we're going to some additional parks equipment, parking lot lights for town hall. And as you remember, it gets really dark out here right now. Some wayfinding signs, uh, 600,000 to remodel the old police department building so we can make use of that, that space. About 150 in town hall improvements, painting, flooring, moving some walls, helping doing some little office stuff. Uh, starting the design on a park maintenance building. And because the parks maintenance folks don't really have a place to store their equipment and do any work and stuff. So we're going to start the design and engineering on that. And of course, the PSPRS 
unfunded liability. In the roads, uh, one of the things we're going to uh, purchase a module office building, they need to get out of their current building. And we've been talking about this for quite a while, so we'll get that done this year. Uh, completing this fiscal year's improvements, all the road work we're doing right now in the current contract, we have about, and then we have about 2,600,000 budgeted for next year's road improvements that we're doing. So all in all, just in this fiscal year, next fiscal year, we're going to spend almost $4.8 million just on road work. So we're going to make, keep whacking at it. We'll get it. Um, water, just a couple small things, completing the fill station and, and doing a new well and pump design. Uh, sewer, I and I study and inflow and infiltration study to see where we're getting all the non-sewer water into our system. Small little driveway project, but the one of the most important is our plant expansion, starting the engineering on expanding our, our wastewater treatment plant. Uh, we do have some of the COVID relief funds remaining and we have the projects outlined and one of them the 1e sewer line is actually being constructed right now so we'll have about 2.1 million left for the perkinsville 89 water and sewer line extension and so with that uh, staff's recommending that we adopt the budget for fiscal year 2023 and resol adopt resolution number 2023-1225 and approve the final budget Okay, thank you. Any questions over here, Sherry? Nope. How about down here? Nope. We're off the hook. <laughs> Thanks. All right, Eric? No. Oh, wait a minute. We got to open a public Are hearing. Kidding? Oh, wait, sorry. Oh, before we open the public hearing. Joe. Yes. <clears throat> so uh, once we pay down, so after this year for the PSPRS funding, because right now I show we're just about 20 million in debt as a town, right? Yes. So that will be down to uh, 18. Yeah. And actually the, this is not considered general obligation debt or, or government debt. So we don't actually book this debt because we don't have to pay down that liability, okay. but it is truly a liability is affecting the town. We can continue right now. We're paying really high contribution rates because we were our, the pension is not fully funded. Okay. So by paying it down, paying the unfunded amount down, will actually reduce the amount that we have to pay right. for contribution rates. Okay. So it's not recorded as debt, though. Okay. Yeah. So and then to completely shift, just so you gave me this attachment, the, the request I asked for. Yes. And um, so if we take out grants and transfers, if we take exclude that from the forty-five million, right? our actual percentage of salaries and benefits to our generated revenue is closer to 40%, not 25, correct? Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah I just wanted to make sure I understood this correctly. So, yeah. so the number we compared to before was the operating expenses to total personnel. Right. So that's the last meeting we talked about this. Well, that included everything. Yes. Yeah. So yes. it was, it was the 11.1 by 45. Right. Now it's 11.1 .1 by 27. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, that's all I have. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to open up public hearing. Mr. Mayor, I did not have any uh, comment cards submitted. No comment one. cards. Anybody have any comments out there? You didn't put in a card? Okay. I'm going to close the public hearing. I'm sorry. All right. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> I make a motion to approve. Oh, no, there's no vote needed. You have to go to a special. It's going to go to the so, next item. Oh, is that right? Next yeah. item. Never mind. Hang on, Eric. <laughs> Hang on, Eric. Councilman. Okay, we'll go to item C. Public hearing resolution of 2023 20, <laughs> to 1226. <laughs> Stop it. I'm sorry. <laughs> related. <laughs> Ready? <laughs> related to the statements and estimates of expenses of the Town Chino Valley Street Lighting Improvement Districts for fiscal year 23-24, which so constitute the budget for the districts for fiscal year 23-24. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. As you know, we have us we have the Chino Valley Street Lighting Improvement District, which is really comprised of three three areas in the Bright Star subdivision. So every year we have to adopt a budget. This is the amount that we're going to charge all the property owners. 
we let the tax we let the county know what this levy amount is and then they just they tax on the property tax bill to all the property owners so they distribute it to each property owner based on their assessed value so last year we uh, did a levy of thirty nine hundred dollars and we're recommending that the that we do the same levy this year so the county collects the money remits it to us and we pay the aps bill is essentially what happens that's it that's it that's any it. questions nope questions okay i'm gonna open the public hearing is there anybody that would like to make a comment i did not have any comment cards on this item either no here. comment cards does anybody want to make a comment okay we're gonna close the public hearing and now we're gonna adjourn this meeting sherry make motion to adjourn second oh, we don't want to approve this budget yet. No, we got to do like it says here. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I get in trouble if I don't. <laughs> okay. Got a motion made to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Say that. Aye. Aye. Okay, we're adjourned. Now we're gonna call the special meeting to order <laughs> and have roll call. Yes, you may. Council Member Shacker. Here. Council Member Perkins. Here. Council Member Phillips. Here. Councilmember McCafferty. Here. Councilmember Armstrong. Here. Vice Mayor Granil. Here. Mayor Miller. Here. And our town attorney is still present remotely. All right. Uh, item two, consideration and possible action to approve resolution number 2023-1225 relating to the town's final budget for year 23-24 and the proposed expenditure limitation for the same year in the amount of $45,150,500. Is there any further discussion on this? I have a comment, by the Mayor, if you will, and it's to the council because I want to make sure, just so everybody knows, I know that the budget's going to more than likely pass, but we increased our budget by, we basically have taken nearly a million dollars a year away from our coffers. And the three principal areas that I hear this town and citizens want regularly, water, roads, and grocery store. Okay, we can impact two of the three of those. But we have permanently, by the expansion of our staffing of almost a million, we have permanently taken that out forever. So our town will always function with a million dollars less per year going forward forever as we move forward away from capital improvement or other infrastructure costs. It, I just want us to be aware of that because now we're creeping up to the 40%, 40% of all of our budgets going to salaries and benefits. If you take away the uh, the Grants and reprograms, those are not dependable yearly incomes. You can't depend on grants as an income every single year. We've been living really good for the last three years because we've been living on COVID and other big federal government uh, funding. Those days are going to, are going to, it's going to tighten up on us fast. And I don't think the grant money is going to be as lucrative as it has been for the last three years. So I just think we need to just be really going forward, really fiscally conservative because we need every cent we need. We were just talking to Mr. Holmes about the, all the capital improvement projects that would be necessary in the future. And we already owe $19 million. And for our town, that's 70% of our budget, our yearly budget. So we got to keep it in control. And I just want everybody to be aware, we're creeping up toward the area where we're not going to be able to do what we want in the future if we keep spending on areas that we'll never get back again. That's all I had wanted to say. Okay, thank you. Anything else? No. No. Oh. Okay, I'm making a motion to approve resolution 2023-1225, adopting the fiscal year 2023-2024 final budget and establishing the fiscal year 2023-2024 expenditure limitation. Second. You second it. <laughs> Okay, motion made and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item three, consideration possible action to approve the resolution number 2023-1226 relating to the statements of estimates of expenses of the Town of Chino Valley Street Lighting Improvement District for fiscal year 23-24, which shall constitute and are approved as the final budgets of the district for fiscal year 23-24. Any discussion on this? No. Okay, I'll make a motion. We approve resolution number 
2023-1226 relating to the statements and estimates of expenses of the town of Chino Valley Street Lighting, lighting Improvement District for fiscal year 2023-2024, which shall constitute and approved as the final budgets of the districts for fiscal year 2023-2024. Motion made. Is there a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. I need a motion to go into executive session. Make a motion we go to and enter executive session. Second. Motion made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Cherry? Make a motion we adjourn. Second. Motion made and seconded to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, we're adjourned. We'll reconvene in executive session. Thank you, Joe. That's our last one, huh? Thank you, Joe. A round of applause here. Thanks, Joe. Our last budget.